Hello everybody, thank you once again for joining me for this here video. Today I want to talk about Selesnia Angels. A few concepts in here that I'm kicking around, and this is something I do before I spin wild cards. I kind of use what I have to see if the concepts will work, and then I go a little more into it. And this is something I think that has some teeth and could probably stick around for a little bit. So let's cover the deck tech that I'm looking at and uh, how I plan to win, all that good stuff. And I think it's pretty powerful, uh, especially like with the addition of things like uh, Knights of Autumn and uh, maybe even some of the newer angels that, that have come out. But here's, here's what I got going on. I got four Healer's Hawks, our good old one casting 1-1 one, one with Flying and Lifelink, four Hunted Witnesses, another one casting 1-1. One, one. When it dies, it makes that 1-1 one, one Soldier token with Lifelink. Um, and the idea here is to get a lot of Lifelink going on. Two moments of triumph. So a mo one moment of triumph on a healer's hawk that's attacking will heal you for five. You'll gain five life. And that's important for um, the uh, Resplendent Angels. You got four Lanoir Elves for some early ramp. Two Prides of Conquerors because it's kind of fun. Um, which it gives you all your creatures plus one, plus one. And uh, if you have the City's Blessing, it gives them plus two, plus two. So that's kind of nice. Two Resplendent Angels. If I had the the desire really to make more resplendent angels i could i've got the wild cards for it um but for now i'm going to stick with two of them just because i mean just maybe when the next expansion comes out for the game i might get more or i might do it before then because these are going to be pretty powerful i think for a while but i'm not seeing them like i want to right now we're seeing a lot of seraph of the scales but not a lot of resplendent angels so I'm kind of on the fence but i like that it's a three casting three three of flying and at the beginning of each end step, not just yours, each end step, if you gained five or more life, it creates a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token of flying and vigilance. Super awesome. And then for six mana, three and three white, it gets plus two, plus two, and lifelink. So it becomes a 5-5 five, five with lifelink, and then it can trigger itself. Uh, it's, it's pretty beefy. Very respectable in its own right, but begs for removal. So it gets removed a lot. Um, not much you can do about it, except for like unbreakable formation or um, Shalai, which is later in the deck tech. Unbreakable Formation is a three-casting instant where creatures you control get indestructible till end of turn, which is cool, but if you cast it during your main phase, like as if it were sorcery, uh, they all get a plus one, plus one counter, and they get Vigilance, which is awesome. I like that. I've got three Sprouting removals, removals for some uh, removal and a token, so it's a 2-2 two -two green and white elf knight creature token, or it can destroy an artifact or enchantment. I like this card a lot. I think it's pretty powerful. Four Knights of Autumn, my favorite knights, mm, up there, possibly my favorite knights. Uh, it's a one, a green, and a white. When it comes into play, you can choose one of three options. You can put two plus one plus one counters on it. You can gain four life, which is relevant for this deck, or you can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Um, it works really good against that terrible gate deck that's coming out with uh, Gate Colossus, which is an 8-8, so you can play something, remove that, and then attack for, for a bunch. Only one a Johnny. I only have one, which I'm okay with. He's he's pretty awesome, so I might make more soon, but I only have one for now. Um, he's a four-casting Planeswalker, so he's one of the cheaper ones. And for his uh, plus one loyalty, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two creatures. For his minus two, you can return a creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This will bring back a Healer's Hawk, a Hundred Witness... Uh, or Lanowar Elf, but nothing else. And then the minus seven is you get an emblem with at the beginning of each of your end steps. It creates three one one cat creature tokens, but they have lifelink, which I like the lifelink piece. Um, and his uh, his ultimate's actually easier to get off than some of the other planeswalkers because it only takes two full turns. On, on the first turn, if you hit his plus one, it comes out basically with five loyalty. So two after that, he's at seven. And it's kind of sneaky because nobody really respects those three tokens all that much. And they have lifelink, so you don't need them to live. You just need them to gain you that life, and hopefully the resplendent angel can do the rest of its thing. I like to settle the wreckage, so you can let an attack happen and then exile pesky things like, um, you know, the uh, rekindling phoenix comes to mind right away. Like, hey, get that guy out of here. Um, those gatebreaker rams, they're pretty pesky. Just gone. See ya. Or if they have a whole bunch of creatures, you can just settle them. And then, uh, you know, kind of a reset the board. I like Shalai. Forecasting 3-4 flying. You, planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have hexproof. Awesome. 
And for six men, that's why it's white and green. Um, for four and two green, but you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. That's pretty awesome, too. I've kicked around putting in a Wilderness Reclamation in this deck just to untap the mana and then tap it again for, like, Shalai and um, Resplendent Angel. So if I can untap the mana, I could pump either one of these, you know, twice a turn, which is kind of cool. But I ha haven't, haven't done that yet, but I might. I like Lyra Dawnbringer. A five casting, five five flying, first strike, life link. Other angels you control get plus one, plus one, and life link. Awesome. Uh, Lyra is pretty much a game ender. There's not a lot of uh, decks that can deal with Lyra, except for like control decks or you know, I mean, cast down is a thing. Ravenous Chupacabra is a thing, but still, it's uh, she's pretty tough to deal with and must be answered pretty much right away. I got three Vivian Reeds just for good measure, so I might drop this down to two and like add a settle. I think I have two. Yeah, I mean, I could do that. But I don't know. I kind of like the way this plays out, at least for now. And and while I do decks like this, there's a little more in it than I would play normally. Just to show the concepts of what's possible. And then I figure out what I like, and then I pare it down just a little bit. So um, I sort of like how this is playing out in testing with more Vivians, because she's an awesome dig for more creatures. And it's all pretty much all creatures in here. So I like Vivian Reed. Five casting, Planeswalker, comes out with five loyalty. Her plus one is a look at the top four cards of your library. Choose a creature or land and put it into your hand. You have to reveal it and then put the rest in the bottom of your library. It's awesome. It's one of the best digs. Now, I knew when this set came out, when Core 19 came out, I actually picked up a Vivian Reed at the draft I went to locally. And I, like she was worth like six bucks. And I was like, this doesn't seem right. And I tried to get a few more. Um, because I had a feeling that she would be the best Planeswalker of that set. And it's a toss-up, I guess, between her and Johnny, but she was my favorite one. Minus three, she destroys the target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. Super great. And then her minus eight is uh, a total game ender. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. If you get that and your opponent doesn't quit, it brings a smile to my face because then you can just watch the attack happen. And it goes off for a whole bunch and they go down to like negative 100. It's, uh, it's terrific and it makes me very happy to, uh, to see that. My land base is a little weak. I don't think I have any more Sun Petal Groves. No, I don't. Or Temple Gardens. No, don't have those either. So I'm running 10 planes, 9 forests, and 2, two and 2. So I don't have any tap lands. I could drop these a little bit and add some tap lands. But for now, I feel like it works okay. Uh, and as I say that, I'm about to get mana screwed in the games and <laughs> the, the playtest of it. But let's see how it plays out. Um, you know, if I did have the inkling to make some more lands, I could do that. It's just not something that I've done yet, that's all. Alright, so taking a look at the hand here. Ooh, it's got... It's got some quickness, and then it slows down a little bit on the top end. But if we draw into any kind of land, we could be in business. I'm going to hang on to it. We'll see how quickly we can get out Lyra with 20, 23 lands, I think was the total. This is like, this is like the beef right here. See what we end up going up against here. A very polite opponent. He says hello. We will match. We will match a healer's hawk for a healer's hawk, and we will see if we end up trading. Now the question is: Is that a trade I want to make just yet? Because the potential for this to be a mono white aggro deck is pretty high. No, it looks like it's going to be black and white life gain, and we're going to stop that life gain. I have a feeling he's playing a Johnny's Pride Mates, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, stop with all the, all the English. We don't need that much. Okay, so we're going to do a, a Healer's Hawk and a Witness, and hopefully not get mana screwed. This is pretty pricey. Maybe I should have mulliganed and tried to get that third land. Hmm. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be the case. So maybe I do need to take a look at the land base and swap out some plains and forest for the, uh, even if they're tap land. So even if one of these was a tap land and I was down to just one creature, I could still play the land or elf and then watch him get casted down. But either way, I could still play him. He's got profane processions in here, huh? Here 
Exile a target creature. So in theory, we could handle enchantments and artifacts like this pretty easily with this deck. Although we can't do anything without mana. So we'll see if we can't get a green mana source and hopefully get a land war elf down and then into uh, like an Ajani or Shalai. We shall see. Okay. Coming up next will be like Pride of Conquerors. Okay, he's just... He drew into all the counters for this deck. That's pretty funny. Although he probably can't do a whole lot without... Uh, he's got the opposite. We've got the hand, he's got the mana. Sort of. Getting closer. So for one more mana, we can do Shalai, and then he has to exile her with Profane Procession. That makes sense. Draw the card. We've got an Inheritance. Okay. More... More mana. So that's a creature. So yeah, let's do a Johnny first. Because he could exile creatures with Profane Procession. So he would obviously exile Shalai because that would be his only choice. So let's just start pumping up creatures. I don't think it matters which one. He may not have too many. I don't want to do both my flyers yet. I, I will. I'll get there. But for now, this is my choice in case he's got a land-based creature soon that I need to deal with. I'm not really worried about ill-gotten inheritance because I am playing some life gain. I am worried about not ever having uh, green mana sources, though. That's kind of scary. That doesn't bother me at all. Memorial to Glory. That's kind of neat. There's the Pride of Conquerors. And I'm still a little timid on playing Shalai because he's got the... Uh, Profane procession going. So I will. You are I will just keep rocking these creatures. This could be a deck we're playing against too, where he's got some settle the wreckage going on. So I'm a little worried about that, but you know, if he if he exiles them, I do have a healer's hawk in the graveyard, and then I can. If he doesn't resolve a Johnny soon, I can pop a Johnny's ultimate. He's got all the card draw too. This is this is ridiculous. This is not a mono white deck, and he thinks it is at this point. He's like, hey, this guy's just playing mono white. I'm actually not. So there's that. It's also the fifth mana source too. So now I can drop any one of my five drop cards, though my creatures. Oh, I don't, I don't have the City's Blessing, so I don't have anything else with Ascend. Although, when I cast it, I think it'll work. So, let's see what he's got in terms of, like, a Settle. He must have something to say about this. Does he, does he profane procession one in response? I'll pump the healer sock. And I think this is game. Unless he's got a cast down. Or a mortify. Yeah. Okay, so I can take out the... The profane procession. Johnny's about to get Vraska's, right? Is that gonna happen? I can make I can make Vivian come down, kill the procession, and then smack him for four. Well, no, I can't. I need the elves to cast Vivian, so I'll smack him for three, I guess. That's okay. 
He's not playing blue. That is terrific. Kill it. Yep, there he goes. Cool. So I feel like if we were playing against a faster deck, that would have been a total loss. But because we got also played against an equally either a slower deck or he had the slow hand, like like we got kind of kind of hosed by the mana mana base. And maybe that's something I'll take a look at here between games. If this game is similar, then what I'll do is I'll take a look at the mana base. And that's sort of how I figured it out, because sometimes when I make a deck, I'll throw in a reasonable amount of land. It still doesn't quite work out. Like, I'll do an aggro deck with with 20 land, and I'll, I'll get too much, and then I'll have to pare it down to, like, 19 even. Oh, this is quick. This is quick. I like everything about this hand so far. I like everything about this. This is great. He scries on his main phase with his one island. There it goes. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna go for Knights of Autumn. And it's, sure enough, I'll be playing a mill deck, so this is uh, quite premature of me, isn't it? But I think we'll be able to start start playing some decent creatures. Yeah. So now he's got to waste all of his removal on Shalai first, which he's got. He'll have uh, lava coils in there. So and lava coil takes care of her pretty nicely. Oh. Oh. Well, we'll lose a hunted witness. And then we will Vivian Nicol Bolas to death. Yeah. How this thing go? This is nothing. Okay. I'm gonna keep my flyer back just in case he decides to attack with that Enigma Drake, and I can block. I do have a Sprouting Renewal to take care of an enchantment or uh, an artifact. So if he does have a he won't be running Conclave Tribunal, but, you know, just in case there's something pesky that he's got going on, I can kill it. And this is the sixth mana that I need to activate my, uh, shall I? I'll go with another Knights of Autumn, but I will not cast it. I will instead attack with just this one. Check this out. Gang block? Yeah. Pumping my creatures now won't do anything. He loses one. That's a sorcery. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Let's see what he's got going on. I think we do... Yeah, we do this in response to something that way. He can't... Like lava coil anymore. Now she's now she lives. Okay. Well, now we can. Oh, was it three? Oh, that's unfortunate. I didn't quite catch that, did I? That's okay. We got another one. And I think we're on for another creature or a land. Oh boy. No, I have to tap them all. So we'll we'll pass the turn. Our opponent can see the Knight of Autumn and the Lair. I like the eyeball thing. That's cool. I'm glad they did that. There's one more change I want them to make to this game before I would call it a perfect game. <clears throat> so he should attack Vivian here, which I believe... I believe I let this happen. I got more Vivians. That's okay. Let's do this again. Because Lyra annihilates these two. She's first strike. She's deadly to them. Okay. 
He can draw one. He'll start pulling out his... Uh... Well, he's going to run a Divination. Maybe he's not running Chemister's Insight. We'll see. But yeah, he attacks. I don't exactly have to block. He's got to waste that Banefire on Shalai, or else... Or else all this stuff is goes haywire. Hmm. A couple more flyers to deal with here. I think we'll let Knights of Autumn get the counters and then be an attack threat. And I'm going to save these for any kind of enchantments he might have. I don't want to attack with Lyra, because he could gang block and kill her at this point. <clears throat> she would do the five damage first, four to this one, one to this one, then she would take six. So I don't love that idea right away. The other Caller of Storms, not the Is It Viceroy, huh? Okay. Interesting. Our opponent has effectively slowed the game down until we draw a resplendent angel. Do some interesting things with with Ral. Okay, cool. Here we go. So let's grab another token. Though he doesn't get haste, which is fine. <clears throat> I want Lyra to get that indestructible. It's holding priority for something. Not sure what. Hopefully he's not running. If he counters this, then no more hosed. And I've easily overplayed my hand quite a bit. But actually, it feels like <laughs> feels like the uh, tokens aren't all that necessary. He's drawing a card, looking for a counter spell. Okay, cool. <clears throat> We're good. I'd like the Hawk to go after Ral, which gets blocked down, without a doubt. Lyra Dawnbringer. Hopefully doesn't. Sometimes they do forget that my creatures are indestructible, and I'll try and gang block and sneak in a kill. niv -Mizzet only triggers... Well, there he goes. He's drawing a card, so now he's going to prick the Healer's Hawk, maybe? Or is he going straight for straight for the dome? Nope, Healer's Hawk. And then he's going to cast a Radical Idea. Nope, Lightning Strike, three damage. Draw a card, one damage. Out of mana. I'm happy with that. Hmm, okay, well, he's delayed the game long enough. I think he's going to be able to sneak away with a win. He could kill Lyra with with Niv Mizzet. There's two, three, four, five, yeah, five, six. He's got the mana and the and the radical ideas to do it. Crackling Drake draws him a card. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm so a couple more options to deal with these pesky flyers or bring creatures back. Let's see what we lost. Maybe I should have protected my Vivian for one more turn. Perhaps would have been, would have been wise to go all out blocking even with like Shalai. Wait, did he just not kill Lyra? He's got to have a shock in there, right? There he goes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Niv Mizzet is strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Game. 
And even if not, whenever I cast a spell, he could he could end it. So that was a good turn of his. Good turn. So I think I think the power cards are going to be like Vivian for card draw for sure. Maybe something else to deal with flying creatures. Of course, maybe that fourth, uh, adding the third and fourth Resplendent Angels to the deck. I still want to see them before I spend wild cards on creatures, or well, before I spend wild cards on on mythics rather, on anything. Really, I like to see how they play out first, even in like sample games, just to give myself an idea of whether or not I like it. Like the, one of the worst feelings I can get in this game, in, in paper and anything, if even if you trade for cards like rares or even mythics, and then they don't work out like you want them to, and you go, oh man, I think I made a mistake. I uh, I don't like that feeling at all. Um, so I want to see how it plays out, and that's what I love about the arena here, because it plays just like magic. I mean, there's no other card games that even look and present this way. So you can get a good sample of what it's going to feel like and play like and before you spend the, the investment on the actual wild card or the... Uh, ooh, this is nice. Before you spend the investment on whatever card it is that you're trying to get. Yep. Third turn Shalai, unless he's got a... Oh, he's, I thought it was black. Okay, good. <clears throat> this is terrific. What does he have? Uh, growth Spiral? Growth Spiral incoming? Opt? De depose. Okay. <laughs> He's can't attack with the Elf in that. He's deposed at the moment. And then if we draw into a land, we are on for a fourth turn Vivian Reed. This is amazing. Terrific. No land, but that is A-OK. -okay. I like uh, Unbreakable Formation. A lot. It's one of my favorite new cards of the set. It's a little expensive. I think Pride of Conqueror still has uh, still has it beat by a little bit. So he has to Conclave Tribunal Shalai. There is no Plan B because everything else is uh, hexproof. And if I get that land, no, oh, this is this is going to cause him some serious hatred right here. I've lost we just so much already. grab the Conclave Tribunal. Out of here. Say no way. Swing in for only two. I'd like to save this token to block the uh, the Knight of Autumn. One of my favorite knights. I love these knights. It's terrific. In every way. Are we in business for Abzan Knights right now? Knights of Autumn, Knights of Grace, Knights of Malice, Mortify. Um, yep, yeah, this, was, this was my plan here. You can probably protect him, but that's okay. Nope. All right. Hydroid Crasis lives. Oh, my poop. Oh, maybe. Let's see what we can draw into. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Let's get a land. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here we go. I did that. I needed the Lanowar Elf alive. Oh, man. I needed... Yeah. Right. I did that. Although, I'm not too upset by this move because I accidentally have a Settle the Wreckage ready to go. Um, and he's going to think that I uh, I just made a misplay. And it did. I mean, that was a total misplay. Um, sort of a misplay in my favor. He could swing in and kill Vivian. I think that's what he's going to try and do. Um, and with any luck, he's got a counterspell. There's no reason that he shouldn't. He's playing blue. I'd counter that for sure. Although that might limit his plans to do anything else, and if he's got... Uh, no, nope. 
So he must have another Krasis ready to go that'll be a 4-4 that I kill with Vivian. And that's the game. I like Flyers and Vivian. This is something that's turned out to be pretty amazing right here. Oh, okay. Right, I'm still killing it, dude. Although I could probably simply get another land and then have the sixth land. Right? I've seen things that would break someone. This like is too you. much. Yeah. That should do it. Right? Oh no, unless he's got an absorb. No. No, he doesn't have any of the good uh good counter spells. So let's leave him at one. We'll leave Dovin alive for now. And then we'll see where we end up. He's not doing too much. So this could be... He might be, you know, weighing the options here. We're at 31. We've gained a ton of life. He's using his minus one ability just to make the Thopter tokens. I can easily kill it with Vivian. I don't know if he realizes that. I don't know if he's got another plan. He might have a settle. He's playing white. Create two one one artifact creature tokens. Okay. Sometimes restoration means retro. Oh, and he's gained a life, so. So that's interesting. Nope, just attack. Yep, these guys. That was kind of neat. I haven't seen that before. I clicked on both of them and then... and then, See this? So click on Lyra and Shalai. Now I've got two arrows. Ah! That is new. I did not do that before. If you click twice, it would remove them as an attacker. Yeah, he blocks. Okay, I'm gonna let that happen. And I will not... give everybody a counter in response. Just say hi when you walk by. Wave at everybody. And I'm gonna hang on to these just in case there's a board clear. That's something I need to get better at too, is when there's a board clear, just to hang on to some creatures, because uh, it's always nice to have something to cast after the fact, and then if you're holding cards, you know... I notoriously overplay my hand quite a bit. On the shoulders of giants. Okay, so he probably has more combat tricks to make tokens. Well, we'll see if we can't get something through here. Land is cool. I'm gonna take a creature. Balance comes. I'm gonna hang on to Shalai. This is strategic. He can see this card, and I don't mind. So now he sort of realizes that, well, I gotta kill Shalai, but he's got another one. So I'm hoping that that has some sort of dramatic effect on his psyche. Don't know if it will, but that's my hope. Now, do we just rush in and everything gets settled? He's probably gotta settle, right? Why don't we do two creatures? And if he blocks the Lanowar Elves, thinking that Lyra won't kill him, I'll pump Shalai once, so, or... If he doesn't block and just calls it a day, or if he settles, I only lose two creatures. Yeah. And if not, either way, pump, and then Lanowar Elves swing in for three. He's counting mana for something over there. Oh, March of the Multitudes, okay. It's got six one ones. Which is which is okay. I fly right over them.
He could definitely take out Vivian, which we saw last game did not, or two games ago, maybe it was last game, did not work out so well. He has to take Shalai. He's got no option to take anybody else. He's got another Dovin in there. Okay, so we'll do another Shalai of our own next turn. He's got to make that Thopter token. He has to. Okay, but maybe he doesn't have to. Tell him to him. Okay. I'll be back. Well, that Just puts him at nine. Okay, so I'm gonna do a Shalai. He counters, he doesn't, he can't counter. We attack for nine, he has to block, giving me back the Shalai. Okay, so I lose Shalai either way, which is fine, but he has to block. And they're both the same, they're both four fives here. And then we'll do, we'll drop a little Hundred Witness. I like this idea. So he can look at the top ten cards, put three of them in his hand with Dovin's ability here, which is kind of neat. I've actually never seen this work, so maybe this will be a good opportunity to judge the power of, of Dovin, the Grand Arbiter, over here. I don't think he's all that strong, but we are about to see if drawing three of the next ten is really powerful enough to make much difference. Yeah, I think I'd like to see more resplendent angels in here, because that would be strong if we were getting a, a vigilance angel with lifelink every turn. That's also a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> or even... Or even tokens, gosh, even tokens that... Uh, And uh, divine visitation, you know, and like sapperling tokens. That'd be kind of cool. Ooh, he's doing something. Mass manipulation. Mm, no, he can't take anybody with like mass manipulation. Okay, so, so here's something that's interesting. He actually can't settle the wreckage, me, because Shalai actually prevents that from happening. So I'm just going to attack with my flyers and assume victory. Unless he's got something else, but he, he actually can't settle the wreckage. Unless he taps... Okay, so he creates two, two token creatures. That fly. These are... this is annoying. But I do gain a ton of life. I'm going to gain seven. Yeah, oh, so I need to cast creatures before I do this buff because I keep losing. So if I had Lanoir Elves down, they would get the plus one, plus one also. And I'm going to gain 13 more. Fine with that. Shalai by default has lifelink because of, <laughs> because of Lyra, which is awesome. He's only got one more deploy in that deck, right? Depose, deploy, depose, deploy. I'm gonna slide over it. Okay, so they're there. They've only got three of them. Another March of the Multitudes. Six and nine, fifteen. First strike damage, regular strike damage. Okay. No enchantments yet, so... Trixie. These ones don't have lifelink, right? Just regular tokens? These ones have lifelink? Okay. I'm only at 60. Yeah, hold back that hero of Precinct 1. So we are going to... 
definitely block one of these guys, two of these guys with lifelink. 13. I'm going to take 15. He's going to gain 13. He'll be at 26. He gains all that loyalty on Dovin. That's... Okay, so let's try this resolve all. That's a cool option. It looks like it just resolves everything on the stack. I like that a lot. And then you can make a bunch of Thopter tokens. He'd go good with, uh, with Karn, maybe. You can make a bunch with Dovin, then when Karn comes out, his, the token Karn makes is huge. Six six, yeah, not really worried about a six six. Hi, droid. Although he probably isn't either. He's probably pretty comfortable with that. I'm going to attack Dovin here. What do you think about that idea? Gain myself a good 14 life again. I don't think he blocks because Dovin's not going to die. So he's not really worried about him. Gosh, I could almost do like a moment of triumph and then get him killed, but I'll wait. I'll hold off. I'll hold off. How to play smart, he's gained so much life back that that it's time to uh, really think about making sure we can find a win condition here. Goodness sakes, look at these life totals. <laughs> this is silly. But I do like how how this deck is sort of able to survive in some some very different different win conditions, uh, even though we did lose against is it Drake? So I guess that happens. He doesn't attack with his Hydroid Crisis for sure. Well, maybe he does. Maybe he does, just because he can probably afford to at this point. I'm shy on a white mana source. So if I draw into a Resplendent Angel, I will not be able to cast the Resplendent Angel and, and pump my creatures with Shalai. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, it takes two green. Okay, no, I'm good. So he's doing something very strategic here. He probably has another March of the Multitudes. So we block. We block. And we block. This is insane. <laughs> this is just insane. Okay, resolve all. I like this feature. This is very useful for big stacks. Thank you, developers, for including that for us. That's very nice. Two moments of triumph. Okay, so... I'm definitely going to save Sprouting Renewal for like a... Like a Conclave, yeah, yeah, he's got more Conclave Tribunals for sure, so I'm saving that. I don't want to get that creature down, even though I am potentially missing out on, on getting a creature pumped up with, with Shalai. I do, I'll do. i go ahead and do this now. Yep, and we will threaten Dovin. We'll probably be able to sneak away with a kill here. I think he blocks... No, he won't, because if he blocks Lyra, his Krasis dies. No, he just eats it. Okay, that's fine. If that's your best, I needn't worry. These results are an anomaly not to be repeated. Though if he... If he tribunals... Shalai, she loses those three counters, and that's making her pretty powerful right now. Mm-hmm. 
Good old growth chamber, buddy. This is where he needs a, a mesmerizing melody or something. Okay, so there's there's the tribunal. He takes July for sure. This is sorcery speed. So we wait until my turn, and we get it back. And it convokes, so we, we absolutely tap the Llanowar Elves. And then we start with July all over again. So we should have the mana for this. One, two, we tap one elf and two lands. And then we can do let July do her thing. Although having a 9-9 nine, nine Lyra Dawnbringer is very powerful. And I'm quite happy about that still. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's the one. Pay three mana. Tap for Convoke is kind of cool. Tap one green, tap one planes. Pew pew. There he goes, so we've got the counter spell for it. That's nice. Very necessary. Very necessary. Okay. Now he can settle. Hmm, okay. So he doesn't. He takes nine. Which is okay. And I don't mind I don't mind this kind of racing style. Even if he has like a he may have a, like an unbreakable formation. To go really well in the deck that he's playing. And I'm sort of okay with that, even though his creatures would get that counter. Um Lyra's kind of built up all this health for me, so I've got 77 health. I mean, I'm not really worried about getting one-shotted or, like, one turn killed. Um, this is an interesting game, though, for sure. Gosh, this is... This is like old-school 90s magic, you know, where everybody's got a hundred creatures out or a few beefy creatures, and just neither one of us is playing uh, the right amounts. Although I am playing plenty of removal. Where are my uh, Knights of Autumn? Another crisis, that's strong. We like that. And a card draw there, and was this like a 20 20? A 10 10? That's funny. No blockers, no lifelink though, so I'm okay with that. It's all land. All of it is land. Hopefully he thinks I just made a misplay because I'm attacking so much and he doesn't understand that I can do things like this. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. This is crazy. Mm, I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Man. There goes my win condition. So I need to take care of creatures who are really... In. Okay, so there goes my Llanowar Elves. Okay, so... I've got so much health, though. And then it takes both of them with the Deputy, which I hate Deputy Detention, whatever. <clears throat> Dovin. So I'd like this deck to be a little faster. Um, other than that, I think there's a few good concepts in it that work. Still haven't seen Resplendent Angel. I think if we had Resplendent Angel down at any point during this massive life gain, we would have that would have been insurmountable. Um, let me see here. Do I do I block? I'll block this frilled mystic over here. I how many turns it's going to take him to kill me? Still at 55. Okay, well now he's at 40. How wild. I love Resolve All. That's so useful. Good old Growth Chamber. And he's got quite the army going on. So I don't think I have any straight up kill creatures in here. Dead. It's not going to help to draw on land either. <clears throat> Let's see what, see what the end result is going to be. Could draw into maybe in a Johnny. Definitely a Knight of Autumn would have been nice. How did I go 35 cards without getting a Knight of Autumn? Well, you know what would have would have come in handy here is to settle the wreckage. Had I used it too early, maybe on that on just one crisis? Yeah. 
if I had it now, that'd be hilarious. Although I thought I was going to win a little earlier, so it lacked the punch on turn turn six or seven. Flourish is nice. I can appreciate that. Let's see. Go for it. Let's see. Just swing in with everything. Do it. Oh, he pulled back his deputies of detention. Darn it. <clears throat> I wonder if this kills me here. Yep, he's got it. He's got it. Okay, interesting game. Interesting game. I like Celestia Angels. I think we're onto something here, especially with Lyra and Resplendent Angels. Well, in theory, and Lyra Dawnbringer. I really wish I would have seen more. I do have them in there, right? More of the uh, Knights of Autumn, I think. I wonder why those didn't come out, but that's all right. Three games in, I like the concept. Maybe when I think about this deck a little bit more, I actually take out Pride of Conquerors. That doesn't seem to do too much in favor of the, the deck concept. And then add more, um, for sure, add more Resplendent Angels because they would be very powerful in like any kind of life gain deck for sure. But but this one in particular with lots of flying and Lyra Dawnbringer. I just don't have the wild cards yet, but I think that's going to be um, next on the menu for a deck like this. But anyway, guys, thanks so much.